We're going to start off with a much simpler problem. It's called the game of life. So looking at objective reality, it's a really big question. How did life start? How did this all begin? And a lot of times with these really difficult problems, it's extremely useful and clarifying to start with a much simpler problem and try to see what you can glean from that and then abstract to the larger, more complex problem. So we can start with something like the basic laws of a universe, a much simpler one. And now let's talk about Conway's Game of Life. So the Game of Life is actually very simple, so we'll go through this together. So the grid that you see right there with the black and white squares, just right now that's a 3x3, three three, but imagine that as infinity by infinity, so it's extending forever. We're going to deal with this 3x3 three three real quick. Each square represents either a living cell or a dead spot. The black squares are living cells. The white squares are empty dead spots. Now, which cells start out alive or dead at the very beginning? That's randomly assigned. But here are the rules for this game. It's three rules. Any live cell with two or three neighbors survives. Any dead cell with three live neighbors becomes a live cell. And all other live cells die in the next generation. Similarly, all other dead cells stay dead. So with every tick after the first assignment, so from every moment to moment, these rules are applied to each cell. Okay, so let's just try the example together. And you can peek over my shoulder. Okay, middle left here. Uh, this is where it gets interesting. It actually has three live neighbors, so this cell becomes alive. And in the middle case, it actually has quite a few neighbors, but we could say that this is overcrowding, so it's going to stay dead. And on the far right, it, this cell does have two to three live neighbors, so it's going to stay alive. So bottom left, this unfortunately doesn't have uh, enough neighbors, so it's going to stay, it's going to stay dead. And in the middle case, there are three neighbors, so it can live. And in the bottom right case, there are two neighbors, so it's going to live. So from one tick to the next, we see that the pattern has changed. And it's a simple application of the rules, applying them over and over. And we can think of this stretching out for a very long time. And of course you would see that we can apply the exact same rules from this grid to another grid and just do it all over again. And of course the pattern will change. Again, this is a three by three grid, but we can extend these out for as much computer memory or space, you could say, as we have. Okay, we just did a mini example by hand, but of course we can get a computer to apply these rules. Now, here's a difficult question is, what do you expect to see from the application of these rules? So I want to ask you to try to imagine the possibilities. Are things going to seem like they're going to move? Are there going to be a group of cells that could live forever? Something that'll take on a stable shape? Personally, I didn't know what to expect, but I kind of imagined that it would be like a lot of, of cells flashing on and off, right? No specific real pattern, just kind of flashing around. It's probably easier just to run the simulation and have it run for a while than it is to really try to think about clearly what all the possibilities are. And some people have let the simulation run for days and days at very fast speeds. And there are incredible patterns which pop up. So with these patterns here, there was never a specific design for any of these patterns. They occur from the initial state and the rules on that state. The results are fascinating because these are like creatures, which are groups of cells, which interact with each other. There are self-replicating creatures, which create new groups of cells, which are sent off. There's a really cool pattern called Gosper's glider gun. As you can see, there's a stable form, the square, and two forms in between it. They're bouncing off the square and then they hit each other. And from this interaction, a little glider starts flying off and just floats towards the corner of the screen. So here's a quote. 
Many patterns in the game of life eventually become a combination of still lifes, oscillators, and spaceships. Other patterns may be called chaotic. A pattern may stay chaotic for a very long time until it eventually settles to such a combination. The game of life is undecidable, which means that given any initial pattern and a later pattern, no algorithm exists that can tell whether the later pattern is ever going to appear. This is a corollary of the halting problem, the problem of determining whether a given program will finish running or continue to run forever from an initial input. Okay, undecidability, the halting problem. These are high level computer science concepts, which we'll get to later, but it's worth trying to get a little understanding. So pretty much it's just really hard to tell what's going to happen next with this level of computation. And we're talking about a lot of computer science, but let me ask you this. Do you think a functioning computer could arise from these three simple rules? In fact, a computer can arise without intervention or design. It can come up spontaneously called a Turing machine. Conway's game of life is Turing complete and can simulate any Turing machine. So that includes your computer and anything your computer can do. Let's get deeper into Turing machines later, but any algorithm can be carried out by a complex enough group of cells in the game. So groups of cells can self-replicate and carry out programs, processing information, all from three simple rules. A large part of why I'm talking about Conway's Game of Life is to show what properties can arise from simple operations. I didn't expect to see so many incredible patterns. And consider the universe we inhabit. What are the basic rules that govern this universe? Well, here's a list of some fundamental physics formulas. Way more than three simple rules. There's quite a bit. Instead of a few basic rules, humans have discovered many laws governing the transfer of energy, heat, motion, etc. We could hardly predict what would come about from three simple rules. So what can we expect from hundreds of laws interacting? Our ideas of cells were extremely simple, alive or dead. Yet the biology of our lives are extremely complex. Physics gives rise to all the elements on the periodic table with their interactions. I would like to explore some of these rules as their implications for life are significant. 